Thank you, Father Yahweh, for this day that you have made for yourself that we should worship you. We should remember that you are our all in all, our Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of everything in our life. Thank you, Father. We glorify your holy name. Thank you, Lord Holy Spirit, that you are always there. We thank you for your faithfulness, our consolator, our teacher of everything, feeding us with the bread of life each and every day. That alone is a privilege. Thank you, Lord Holy Spirit, for this day, this year day of the 28th of April 2019, the scripture that you gave us, 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 1 to 2, I read. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Yahshua, that as ye have received of us how we are to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Yahshua. And of course, this is the word of God, Father Yahweh, glory be to your holy name. Thank you, Father. The sermon that the Holy Spirit gave me to write, I title it, Christian means a saint. Christian means a saint. Beloved, after this sermon, please do everything to become a real Christian. The way uh, this, scripture, this scripture invites us, and this sermon invites us, explain to us who a Christian is, a true Christian, a true Christian. First lack of this presentation, conditions to become a Christian. Many call themselves Christians while they keep on sinning and living a life of filthiness. Despite the heretic doctrine, for it is heretic indeed, uh, that a priest or a pastor had taught you, uh, alleging that all it takes is declaring that you believe in Christ and you will be saved based and they are basing this on Romans 10 uh, verse 9. Uh, uh, we, unfortunately, despite that, salvation is not guaranteed you because you verbally declared, you verbally declared something. It takes strong spiritual commit, commitment for, to Yahweh, for Yahweh then to save you. This is what authorized King James Version of the Bible, one of the most faithful translations of Holy Scriptures, renders for Romans 10, verses 9 to 10. I read, That if thou shalt confess with thy, thy mouth the Lord Yahshua, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mark confession is made unto salvation." End of quote. This is not ju just verbal confessing as, as many teach, and that is why they are teaching heresy. It must come from a heart that that knows Christ and confesses it. That is knowing that he is the word of Yahweh according to John 1 verse 1 and knowing that that, that, that divine word which he is the word of Yahweh. Believing that Yahweh raised the Yahshua from the dead means you believe also that you will also be raised, raised from the dead if you follow him, if you follow Christ, the word of God. But how do you follow Christ? What are the conditions to follow him? Yahshua himself gave an answer, I quote, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself 
and take up his cross daily and follow me. And of course, this is quoting Luke 9 verse 23. You heard it very well. These are the two conditions to become a Christ follower, of Christ follower, which means a true Christian. There are two conditions then. There are two conditions. First, to, to become, to, first, you must deny yourself. Be totally convinced that you are not a God. For Adam and Eve believed they were gods. They were gods in Genesis 3 verse 5 and were cursed and they were cursed of Yahweh for this original sin and you must humble yourself therefore before God Yahweh in three persons the Father the Son Yahshua Christ and the Holy Spirit and you must also humble yourself before your fellow humans that is called brokenness. For humility in the knowledge of Christ is that which bring you the grace of faith. Faith is a grace. That is why people struggle. They say, why is not my faith strong? Because in the first place they believe that they are faithful. And this is said, this is said in Matthew 8 verse 10. Second, you must carry your cross daily. You must carry your cross daily. You must carry the miseries of life, of this life daily. For to be hanged on the cross was the most grievous and cruel punishment that there was among the Jews. You cannot be a Christian and say you will not suffer any pains. For Yahweh will often inflict you some afflictions, be it only to test your faith or to build you up uh, uh, as a man of perseverance, as it is said in James 1 verse 3, as a man of uh, uh, perseverance of character and of hope, as it is said in Romans 5 verse 4. You cannot be a Christian if you do not deny yourself if self and pride fill your heart, you cannot be you cannot be a Christian. If ignorance and rebellion are to Yahweh are in your habits, you cannot be a Christian. You cannot be a Christian if you avoid carrying carrying your cross daily by living a life where you face no sufferings or tribulations. For a Christian is a warrior. A spiritual warrior just like Christ as it is said in Ephesians 6 verse 12 second leg of this presentation sanctification is first step to Christianity sanctification is first step to become a Christian sanctifying yourself is part of denying yourself and when you deny yourself, then you can, you can do the next thing, carry your cross. When you are humble. When you are not humble, you are not ready to carry your cross. You will always be crying and doing everything to, 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 to avoid the miseries of life. Remember that the word self in yourself indicates your soul. And that all that Yahweh says in Holy Scripture is addressed to the soul of man. The soul is that breath of life, breath of life between quotes. That breath of life breathed on Adam's muddy body, on his muddy nostril, and he became a, I quote, living soul. End of quote, quoting Genesis 2 verse 7. Without the breath of life, which is identifying true, identifiable true man's emotions, volition, intellect, 
and conscious, subconscious and unconscious mind, the body would just decompose and, and become dust again. The doctrine of sanctification speaks to the soul in general and to the conscious mind which is called in the Bible the heart in scripture. Let us interpret this day scripture. It says, furthermore, it hardly expresses the original, but Paul is not adding a further injunction as, as in former, former chapters, for he has yet given none. It is literally, it is literally for the rest then. And it served to introduce the conclusion of this letter. And the scripture says, We beseech you, brethren, and a quote, the Greek, puts it literally, we ask you, we ask you, since the original uh, uh, letter was written in Greek, we ask you, we request, it is not as, as strong a word as that which follows. Or oh, we, we request of you in the most kind and tender manner, from real and, and hearty love and affections for you, and with a view to your good and the glory of God. And the scripture uh, uh, continues saying, and exhort you, end of quote, that means, or beseech you. That is, the word which is commonly used to denote earnest ex exhortation. The use of these words here imply that Paul regarded the subject as of great importance. He might have commanded them. But kind exhortation usually accomplishes more than a command. We beseech you and entreat you. That's what he says. The apostle does not lay his command upon them as he might have done and sometimes does, but endeavors to work upon them with, with uh, on, on them by, by the way of entreaty in which he doubtless thought uh, the most effectual metho method to win upon them and to gain them. For some minds are more easily wrought upon by entreaty than by authority. And this he does in the most moving and powerful manner. Even I quote, I quote him, by the Lord Yahshua, end of quote, or in the Lord Yahshua Christ, or in his name and by his authority as personating him and as though he did beseech and entreat by them by him and his fellow ministers. Paul stands as a true Christian, a man in whom Christ is and he is in Christ, as it is said in Galatians 2 verse 20. Then the scripture continues saying, I quote, That as ye have received from us, end of quote, as ye were taught by us, Paul doubtless has given them repeated instruction as to their duty as Christians. Then the scripture says, how you ought to walk and to please God, end of quote. That is, how you ought to live so as to please Yahweh. Life is often represented as a journey in Romans 6 verse 4, 8 verse 1, 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7, Galatians 6 verse 16, Ephesians 4 verse 1. Life is a journey, a walk. Paul refers them to the direction he has given them about it as a rule. 
for he did in his ministry not only open gospel mysteries but explain moral duties in holy scriptures in the gospel the work of believer is twofold either internal or external their internal work life is by faith which is the going out of the soul by faith to Christ for every supply of grace. Their internal work of our life, in the external work of life, I mean, is not as it was before conversion, according to the course of this world, to the journey of this world or as other Gentiles walk. But in a holy religious life and conversation, and this requires spiritual life, strength, and direction from Yahshua Christ. For either dead man, a dead man in general, nor if alive, yet weak, can walk nor is it in a spiritual man that walks to direct his steps and such as walk also de denotes continuance in well-doing and a progression or, or going on in it or in it and supposes ways to walk in. Yahshua Christ, Yahshua Christ, he is the chief and principal way. And there are other paths, to, paths which regard, uh, we regard him or relate and lead unto him. But he is the principal way. As the way of truth, the uh, the other the, uh, the other the other paths that lead to to him are the way of truth, the path of of ordinances uh, uh, and of religious worship, both public and private, and the ways of righteousness, of holiness, and good works. The manner in which sins are to walk is as Christ himself walked after the Holy Spirit and not after the flesh according to the rule of the word of God which is the standard of faith and of practice with prudence, wisdom, circums circumspection and, and worthy of Yahweh and of that calling wherein they are called and of such of such a walk there is a necessity a necessity it out it must be both on the account of Yahweh it being his will and for his glory and the contrary would show great ingratitude to him to Yahweh and on the account of the saints themselves to adorn them and their profession and preserve them from shame and disgrace to show their faith and demonstrate their calling and election to others and likewise on account of others, partly for the winning of some in the Great Commission duty, by recommending in this way the gospel to them, and partly by the bringing of others to shame and silence who falsely accuse their good conversation, the conversation of the saints. Now when the Apostle Paul and those that were with him were in Thessalonica. They gave these sins, these true Christians, the first Christians, 
directions and instructions about their work and conversation to order it in such a manner as might, I quote, please God, end of quote, which is not to be understood of rendering their persons acceptable to Yahweh, to, to Yahweh hereby. For the sin's acceptance with Yahweh is only in Christ, the, the beloved of Yahweh. Nor of their gaining the love and favor of Yahweh by such means. For the love of Yahweh is from everlasting and is free and sovereign and does not arise from or depend upon the holiness and obedience of men. But also, it cannot be of making peace with Yahweh by such a work, for peace is only made by the blood of Christ, through the blood of Christ. But it is of doing those things, and in such a way, Yahweh approves of, approves of. That is the accepted, uh, that is, uh, uh, in all this I'm explaining the meaning of the, of the word pleasing God. He approves of. And uh, let us see the others who are not approved. Ungenerated men, unregenerated men cannot please Yahweh, nor anything they do, because they are destitute of the Holy Spirit of Yahweh and are without Christ and His grace and they, they are not they are without Christ and His grace and have no faith in Him without which it is impossible to please Yahweh. But what a believer does in faith from a principle of love in the name and strength of Christ and to the glory of Yahweh is approved by Yahweh and is acceptable to him through Christ and for his sake, the sake of Christ. And there are many things of this kind as prayer, praise, acts of benefit, bene, beneficence to, to the poor, acts of beneficence to the poor, or and indeed every good works and holy actions. And inasmuch as they had been thus taught and instructed how to behave and conduct in their outward walk and conversation, they are entreated and exhorted to go on and abound in the work of the Lord. As he said, I quote, so you would abandon more and more. End of quote. That is, follow the directions which you have received more and more fully. That you labor to excel more and more and daily surpass yourself. Surpass yourselves. And not only to walk in these directions, but to, I quote again, Abound more and more, end of quote, to press forward to a greater exactness and excellence in your Christian conversation. And he here uses motives. First, from the person in the person in whose in whose name he speaks to them which is the Lord Yahshua Christ, for he was but Christ, minister and ambassador. Second, from the knowledge that they had received of their jury and therefore they could not plead ignorance. And third, third, their walking as they had been instructed by him would please Yahweh. That is, Christians should be more and more in the exercise of every grace 
and in the discharge of every duty, making advances in holiness of life and perfecting it in the fear of Yahweh. In the fear of Yahweh. Then the scripture continues saying, You know, for ye know what commandments we gave you. End of quote. It was but a short time since a short time since Paul was with them, and they could not but recollect the rules of living which he had laid down. Then the scripture continues saying, by the Lord Yahshua, end of quote. So this means by the authority of the Lord Yahshua Christ. For some of those rules or commandments the apostles refer to in the following verses, namely, not fornicating and love. Therefore, not to walk as the apostle has commanded would be disobedience to Christ himself and he minds them of what they knew that their knowledge might be exemplified in practice for as faith so knowledge is dead which does not influence the life and they knew that he commanded, Paul commanded them, not in his own name, but in the name of Christ. Paul is exhorting the Thessalonians to rise to a level of holiness in their, due, in their daily living. Even though they were doing well, Paul encourages them to improve their consistency even more. But using the word walk, which means love, as I said, Paul puts an emphasis on actions, actions. But then he immediately adds that it is to please Yahweh, which demonstrates the importance of motives, motives. Then in verse 3, which follows the scripture of the day. Apostle Paul writes, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. End of quote. It isn't just active sexual immorality that is to be avoided, but all passionate lust as well. Because you, you commit the sin of fornication by intention since God reads your mind, He reads your heart. Even the mere avoidance is not enough in this. Christ the followers, which means true Christians, are instructed to maintain control over their bodies in a way that is both holy and honorable. Clearly, one way to, to avoid sexual impurity is through marriage and a proper understanding of, of sex as Yahweh designed it. For the Lord said, I quote, That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh and of quote quoting Genesis 2 verse 24 scripture sets marriage apart from the motives ideas and values of a word that does not know Yahweh Paul's reference to one's brother is unusual in verses 6 to and 7 essentially Every other time he uses this word, brethren, uh, uh, he intends it as a synonym for believer. In this context, however, he seems to refer to a fellow human being. 
either male or female. His message is that inappropriate sexual behavior has victims. Adultery on the part of one spouse betrays the other and hurts the other. Yahweh's punishment for adultery is very severe. You will need to read Numbers 5 verses 11 to 15 and 19 to 22. Premarital sex robs both parties of the gift of the gift of virginity in marriage and verification of its destructive nature is the fact that Yahweh will exact the punishment on all such sins. To abide in the faith of the gospel is not enough. We must abound in the work, in the work of faith. The rule according to which all should walk and act is the commandments given by the Lord Yahshua Christ. Sanctification in the renewal of their souls under the influences of the Holy Spirit and attention to appointed duties constituted the will of Yahweh respecting them. In aspiring after this renewal of the soul unto holiness, strict, strict restraint must be put upon the appetites and senses of the body and on the thoughts and inclinations of the will, human will, which lead to wrong uses of them. The Lord calls none into his family to live unholy lives as many Christians think. That <laughs> they tell him you are already saved because you made a declaration. Therefore there is nothing. You don't have to worry. You can keep on sinning. Christ is going to carry your, your, your sins and take them away. Heresy. The Lord calls none into his family to live unholy lives, but that they may be taught and enabled to walk before him in holiness. Some make light of the precepts of holiness because they hear them from humans, but they are Yahweh's commands, and to break them is to despise Yahweh. So don't complain again. <laughs> don't complain anymore. If you despise Dash Yahweh and you have no answers to your